you are entering another internet. An internet not only of bullying and meanness, but of wrath. Submitted for your approval, the loop. Blessed Jesse. <laughs> Load up on guns and bring your friends. It's fun to lose and to pretend she's overboard and self assured. Oh no, I know a dirty word. Hello, 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 hello. With the lights out, it's less dangerous. Here we are now, entertain us. I feel stupid and contagious. Here we are now, entertain us. A mulatto, an albino, a mosquito, my libido. Yeah. You are entering another internet, an internet not only of bullying and meanness, but of wrath. Blessed Jesse.
a tragedy. I can't believe what we lost. It's already been, and I can't believe it, a year to the day that we lost our queen, a hero, Nassim Agdam, Dom. 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 a.k.a. Queen Nassim. And of course, we loved her. We appreciate the sacrifices she made for us and the changes she tried to bring to this world. A year ago, we had an episode about Nassim and her magical feat at the YouTube headquarters. And I made a prediction. I said, even though she set back feminism about 10 years by failing to hit a single target and kill them, she hit three people, but she only managed to kill herself. Even th- Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, that's a success. <laughs> Setting back feminism, thank you again. Man, the blessings keep coming from our queen, Queen Nassim. Thank you to dear God. But I made a prediction a year ago. I said, even though she killed nobody, YouTube and all of these companies, they're going to finally start learning the lesson. They're go- this will be the wake-up call we need. Queen Nassim has just told Big Tech It's time to stop with gaslighting everybody on the internet. Now, of course, I don't believe in gaslighting. You guys know that about me. I think gaslighting is a bullshit term used by women to try to get men in trouble for being right about things. Just call it a hunch. I don't know. It's a term that comes from a 1930s movie and literally no examples or any sort of proof in the real world. But... If I were ever to use the term gaslighting, it would certainly be with the shadow banning and the constant uh, trying to make you think that maybe you just need to work a little bit harder to get your content out there. Oh, no, it turns out you just need to have the right connections and pay the most money to do it. Maybe, just maybe, that little trick YouTube and all the other big tech companies use against us Maybe that is a sort of gaslighting. I think it's what happened to Nassim. So let's do a quick pulse check here on the state of things ever since Queen Nassim did her magical deed. How have things changed? Are things different? We're going to find out tonight. But as I think about it, you know, as I think about it, I can just look at my own personal stance here on YouTube and other places, Facebook, Twitter, especially lately, I can think about it and I can go, well, what has changed? Have they stopped doing these things? You know, Jack Dorsey from Twitter has appeared on Joe Rogan twice now trying to explain himself with all the shadow banning and all the other nonsense they do. So where are we at today, one year out from the big tech shooting? Well, let's see. Um, I just checked these numbers. It turns out less than 5% of the views I get on any video are from subscribers. Every single day, YouTube is unsubscribing people from me. I can check these numbers. I can see it. Um, only Only a very small percentage of subscribers to the channel actually ever even watch the videos, thus making subscriptions pointless. I assume the little bell next to the subscription button is a placebo effect to make you think you really did it that time. But it turns out, nah, not so much. Of course, I got terminated on YouTube, and although we did bring ourselves back, thank you so much to everybody out there who made that possible, although we did bring the channel back, I gotta say, ever since then, it's been a huge uphill battle from there. I don't think we're winning this war by any means. There's much smaller channels doing a lot less than us that can get up there a lot faster because they haven't had to deal with these things. And I'm talking about channels that have even gotten these same sort of strikes we've gotten. I don't think there's any recovery from being terminated and brought back. And of course, I just got privacy complaints that were bullshit. I'm getting constant messages from YouTube about Uh, copyright claims that are complete bullshit even though I'm doing fair use and then those companies fighting it. It looks like, it looks to me like YouTube didn't learn the lesson at all. And I have a feeling none of the big tech companies did. I've already lost more Facebook accounts permanently. I'm banned currently on three Facebook accounts right now. Two of them I hadn't even used in months. I'm on my fourth Twitter account at this point. So I think Jack might have been lowing Lying to old uh, Toe Rogan over there, five foot nothing Joe, buying it again. Thanks 
Tim Pool for all your help trying to make Joe feel like he understands something, but the street shitter Jack brought with him apparently just made everything okay, smoothed it all over, despite the fact that Tim ran fucking circles around them. So I guess Big Tech hasn't gotten the message. Now look, I'm not for violence. I'm not. I'm not for these mass shootings or anything. I think the thing that happened in New Zealand is terrible, okay? And that was, by the way, YouTube's fault too. Subscribe to PewDiePie. I think if you subscribe to PewDiePie, you're part of that shooting. Don't subscribe to him, all right? I know that's not going to be popular with a lot of people out there because you guys like your memes. But honestly, what's he doing? Okay, ooh, Elon Musk. Ooh, isn't that fun? Ugh. God, I mean, what can't are you ever going to get over it? Elon Musk put out a song about Harambe three years later. I did it the next day. Elon Musk. I don't get it. Look, I don't get it. Again, not for the violence. I would never condone it ever, ever, ever. But there comes a time. At a certain point, a line is drawn in the sand. At a certain point, you can't be poked anymore. You have to expect retribution from just being poked and poked and poked over and over and over. And all the people out there who believe in gaslighting certainly think that's true. They would agree with that. So I am against violence. But you know what else I'm against? I'm against monopolies. I'm against suppression of speech. And I'm against pedophilia and oh guess what youtube that's three strikes you're terminated so tonight on the show we're going to try to find the person who can take queen nasim's footsteps they can fill those shoes and finish the job that nasim started now i don't want anybody to get hurt i'm just asking you youtube from a youtuber to youtube okay heed the message Stop the bullshit. We had this shit figured out 15 years ago on the internet, and everyone was fine. So it's between the dollar for you and, well, your lives, I suppose. So let's really go bully the internet. This is Pot Awful. Pot Awful sucks, you faggot. Funny. I want to really kick your ass. My mom doesn't like it when I mention Pot Awful anymore. All right. Sorry about that. I missed the intro there a little bit. I accidentally had the thing muted still from that Nassim video. Uh, but welcome to the show. Thanks, Pizza Fund, for making it possible. This is the Pot Awful Primo Show for the week. Remembering Nassim Agdam. We know her, we love her. And ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome out a special little friend of mine. You know her. You love her. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Tiny Nassim. There she is. There she is. Beautiful Tiny Nassim. I know you guys, you must be dying for her in the chat room right now. Had to bring her out. We love her. All right, get off my hand. Okay, there we go. Tiny Nassim. I miss her. I do. I miss her every day. I really do. Let's check in with that chat room, see what they're saying in there. I'm not for shootings either, but they are pretty cool, says Caleb. I mean, it's an interesting thing. You know, as far as news stories go, it's the one that I'm the least who cares about, for sure. Hell yeah, brother, says Patrick, and a big hell yeah, brother, back to you. The Harambe meme will never die, says Joe. It's getting sick. Real threat, says Patrick. Real threat, says Plank. The falling down episode. This It is getting, yes, the falling down. By the way, if you are a guy who's like, you know what my favorite movie is? Falling down. I'm gonna, you know, what, where's, the, where's the cheese? I see a big, fat burger pat. If you're the guy who's really into that movie, and I do own that movie on DVD, if you're really into that movie, you probably should be investigated at some point. But this is, uh, you know, we're getting into a falling down sort of territory here. If Queen Nassim, who had a very small channel and very 
I mean, she <laughs> look at the content she was producing. It was nuts. She's our first posthumous goon, but she's absolutely a goon. Don't get it wrong. We've got goons that are also friends of the show, right? We love the goons, some of them, just as much as we love our own mother. And Nassim is one of those. But she had this tiny, tiny little channel. And if that was enough, if that little channel was enough to set her off where they're hiding her content, not letting her grow, imagine how I must feel at this point. I'm like 10 years, I'm like eight years into the YouTube channel, probably less than that, like really doing the whole YouTube thing. You know, maybe like six, five years into that part of it. I'm not exactly sure at this point. But I've been doing it a while, right? And we were on a meteoric rise for a minute there, and then just complete stagnation. And weirdly, it happened right around the time we got terminated, and it's been a trickle ever since. It's always up. I will say this. It is always going up. It's never going down. But every day, we lose subscribers to a degree that I know for a fact means people are being unsubscribed. They're not unsubscribing. When was the last time you unsubbed to a YouTube channel? Just ask yourself that. Because I've asked that on the show before. I've asked people, have you, do you even bother going back through your subscriptions and looking to see, do you still follow this person? Are you still into what they do? Because I've got this big thing. I have this big, uh, I don't know, way of life for, for my own self where I'm like, you need to reevaluate what you've been checking out, right? Don't do it with Pot Awful, okay? You love Pot Awful still. Pot Awful still choice primo best show on the internet obviously it really is <laughs> i mean it really is everything pales in comparison to this show and i i really envy you guys i wish i could watch this show but i i have to ask do you guys unsubscribe to things i, I mean i'm sure you've done it once or twice right i'm sure you went to something you're like fuck this guy and finally did it but there's probably a bunch of you out there who are still subscribe to shit like h3h3 Philip DeFranco. I mean, you subscribed to it three, four, five, six years ago. You just forgot about it. It probably doesn't even show up in your sub box anymore. So it doesn't even matter. It doesn't affect you. So I understand it then. But I do feel like every once in a while you need to reevaluate things. But I don't think most people ever unsubscribe. When you go to people's sub subscriptions list on their channel, it's filled with shit where you know, you know they're not watching that stuff still. You look at it and you go, There's no, who's a fan of this? There's no way. Ray William Johnson. You're still a fan of Ray William. You're still a fan of Fred with the backwards R. Do you guys remember these things? There's no way. There's no way. I don't think anybody ever unsubs. I think that's how people have millions of subscribers. There's no way PewDiePie has as many million subscribers as he has without it being repeat accounts, right? Not repeat accounts, but repeat subscribers it's the same person on multiple accounts subscribing over and over and they just never get unsubbed whatever and you know once you get to a certain level youtube doesn't do those little shenanigans with you youtube's doing shenanigans to me i'm still getting the shenanigans you want to know a great shenanigan lately one of our biggest episodes in recent history just uh last week the amy schumer episode obviously got a bunch of views netflix of course came after me to try to make a claim on it I'm fighting it for the fair use thing. They haven't responded, which means I'll probably win it. Usually they respond pretty quickly if they're interested. Um, I think I'll probably win that one, but that's not where the fuckery comes in. This is fucking beautiful, and it's not the first time this happened. When an episode is getting a little heat on it, when it gets those numbers up high fairly fast, when it might start hitting algorithm levels, algorithm, algorithm. when it gets to that point, Guess what YouTube does to me now? This has been a thing. You've probably seen this on my channel. Did you know this isn't a fuck up on my end? This is, a, this is great. So go to the Amy Schumer video right now. This may or may not work for you, but if you go to the Amy Schumer episode we did just that last week, um, especially on desktop, this doesn't usually happen on mobile, but on desktop, it's completely out of sync, the audio and video. Now, those of you who are there watching it live, you won't recall that having happened. Those of you who watched it a few days after it first aired, you probably didn't see it then. But about four or five days later, they just made the audio go out of sync. Now, why would that happen? What technological reason would come in and change the very functionality of a video? Something that should be so ingrained, the sync of audio to video. There shouldn't even be a way 
to fuck with that. It's, you would think that's all one thing. I streamed it to them. That's what they've got. I didn't edit the video. I didn't edit it on YouTube. Nothing was changed. What I streamed is what they got. It remained that way for days, and now it's out of sync by about a minute. By about a minute. And you've probably seen that on some of my other videos, too. Now, I can't prove that that's something happening to me on purpose to try to fuck with my channel. But here's what I do know. I've talked to people at YouTube about this. I've talked to them for uh, tech support on this. And when I ask them what would cause this, they don't have an answer. Now, they've always got an answer. It's usually a bullshit answer. Whatever, whenever I've got these issues with them, they've got some sort of fucking smart-ass answer for me where I go, no, it can't be that, but they've got one. This one, they acted like they'd never seen it before. Now, that's suspicious to me. Considering all the things I've been through with them, that's incredibly suspicious to me that they don't have any sort of even fake-out reason. I said, it streamed fine. It was fine for days. Why now? Why five days later is it out of sync? What could cause that? They tell me they don't know. My thumbnails will not update properly. You might notice now I do the thumbnail for the video ahead of time. Used to be I'd make the thumbnail after the show. That way I would know what happened in the show exactly. You know, this is an improvised show. I'm making this up as I go along. Now, making a thumbnail for a show you haven't done yet is nearly impossible. Okay, and now I'm having to do it because it's the only way I could find to make it so that they don't completely fuck up my thumbnails because they won't update the thumbnail after the show has already streamed. They used to, but on my channel, they don't do it anymore. When I ask them why, they don't know. They've never seen it before. They tell me it's not even happening. I, I check with other people. I say, are you seeing a thumbnail that I created or are you seeing a still from the video? as the thumbnail. They tell me they're seeing a still from the video. Even though I sat there and fucking took an hour to make a thumbnail, they're not seeing it anymore. So I know for a fact it's not just me, not just my computer, not my browser. I know how to check all that. I'm not an old man. I am an old man, actually. I'm elderly, and I need to be put away. But they will lie to your face and tell you it's not happening to you. Now, from what I understand from girls, girls. that's gaslighting. Why would a major multinational monopoly, <laughs> why would they need to gaslight people like this? I don't know. Why me? Specifically, I'm a small-time dude. I don't know. I'm pretty small-time. I feel like I'm small-time. I don't have that many viewers. I certainly don't have that many subscribers. You know, there's a good number of pizza funders, but considering, like if I was big, I'd be rich, man. <laughs> if I was popular, I'd be rich. I need you guys to understand that. If I was popular at all, I'd be making more money than just about anybody. Assuming that the numbers line up from what they are now to there, if you extrapolate the exact same way, I'd be fucking rich as hell. I'm telling you. So I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right, but I'm saying something wrong. And I think Queen Nassim went through a very similar thing. Of course, she was just a crazy vegan woman but I'm pretty sure she was a little more woke to stuff than they want to let on, right? Let's check that chat room again, see what you're saying. Why would YouTube not like Pot Awful? Question mark, question mark, question mark. Can't understand it. Maybe is it, is it that I don't monetize my videos? Maybe that's not helping me. Is it that over half of the content on my YouTube channel is hidden behind a paywall outside of their system? They probably don't like that very much either. Maybe. Maybe. I'd be happy to use another service, though, that's okay with that just that those services never seem to take off. It's weird, man. I don't know. It's really weird. I noticed that old thumbnails pop up, says James Quinn. So I'm not fucking making this shit up. But when I tell YouTube that's happening, they tell me it's not. They tell me it's not. They tell me I'm wrong that it's happening. That's insane. <laughs> They're pissing on my leg and telling me it's raining. Um, so let's get into some Nassim stuff here. We're talking about the queen. She's a killer queen. That's right. Um, <laughs> that's it. Queen Nassim. Um, let's look back a little bit. Can we go back in time a little bit to, uh, this is just from our episode last year, but I loved this clip so much. I thought it was so, such a funny bit. I thought I'd replay it tonight in memory of Queen Nassim. This is our news report immediately following the Nassim shooting. Okay. This is from the BBC.
Guns, Yanks, Vlogs and Boobies, it's the most titillating shooting in American history. For BBC News, I am Alan Fancybottom. The AP Wire has confirmed that the YouTube shooter is not only down, but also female. In the past two decades of American history, only three active shooters have been female, which begs the question, why are shooting victims so inherently sexist? We spoke to Jacqueline Schickrant, an expert on female violence and an assistant professor of public justice. It's a BBC News special report. Women usually are not as likely as males to kill strangers. So what you're saying is, is that women are manipulative black demons who kill those closest in their families. Who do these black widows target the most? Uh, usually their crimes involve people that they know, specifically intimate partners or children. Nassim Agdam, of course, didn't manage to kill anyone but herself, having only wounded three others. So what you're saying is that women don't know how to use guns, and women aren't smart enough to use guns, and women are too incompetent to know how to kill? Um, women are also typically less likely to use a firearm. They instead use uh, things like poison or suffocation. But what of Agdam's wounded victims? They are recovering in Zuckerberg General Hospital in San Francisco, a hospital itself ironically named for the billionaire FBI agent Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg, of course, founded Facebook itself rife with censorship. It leads one to wonder when, not if, will someone go to the same extreme lengths to fight back against censorship against Facebook themselves. Here we have footage of Zuckerberg at his Facebook Menlo Park campus, which may give some would-be shooter a better idea of the floor plan and perfect line of sight to do the most damage possible. Uh, we just moved in here about a couple of months ago at this point, and um, the thing that's notable about it is it's just this massive open floor plan. So here we can, we can pan around and you can check it out, but uh, basically just for as long as you can see. It really makes you think, doesn't it? All that open space and glass? Probably wouldn't be hard at all. I bet it's even a gun-free zone. As for YouTube, they were recently issued a copyright notice from public schools in America and will be forced to run adverts on this shooting. Also, this report will not be available in Germany. That's all for now, and remember, PAY YOUR FUCKING LICENSE FEE, YOU BUNCH OF MOTHERFUCKING CUNTS! There you go. The uh, thanks to Lord Matthew for that one. It's just too too funny a video not to play. I don't think it got enough uh, love last time. And of course, you see the wide open floor plan there for <laughs> Facebook. So you know, maybe if there's a future Nassim, we can go to Facebook too. She's a killer queen. All right, so <laughs> there you go. How's uh, YouTube going to like me playing that? Probably not very much. Speaking of Zuckerberg, one of the very few lessons they seem to have learned about this, they didn't learn the lesson to stop what caused the shooting. That's never the lesson learned when there's a shooting, right? They never learned that unless there's like a huge catastrophic loss of life. Like if it's really big, there's some lessons learned. Although you nowadays, when the really big ones happen, we don't even learn why they happen. You know, Stephen Paddock, we're never going to figure that one out. There's a little bit of learning that happens, though, the more the body count rises. So the only thing they learned on this last one was that they need to be ready to be shot because it's probably going to happen again. So here's a, uh, an article from Gizmodo. Someone clued me in on this in the cult a little while ago. It says, Facebook may have built Mark Zuckerberg an escape tunnel nicknamed The Panic Shoot. And there's that fucking reptile right there. Look at him, that robot. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg, who used to be concerned about maintaining a low public profile until mounting scandals forced him into the limelight last year, understandably has a rather hefty security detail. As the CEO of a company with billions of users across the globe, a fair number of whom are presumably less than fond of him, 
He reportedly has a $10 million annual security budget that includes armed guards, elaborate security systems, home panic rooms, and more. Employees say he is also he also has an escape tunnel, according to a recent report from Business Insider. I love hearing that. Now, obviously, I don't love him having the escape tunnel. I'd like this to be a lot harder for him to uh, deal with. But I do love the fact that he has to live in such constant fear of retribution for the crimes he knows he's committing that he has to spend a good chunk of his fortune on protecting himself. That's good. That's a good thing that that has happened. It means he understands he's doing something wrong. He's not going to stop doing the wrong thing, but he is going to live his life in fear forever. And for that, we can say thank you to dear God and thank you to Queen Nassim. Now, I put a little poll on YouTube. You can go to my community page on YouTube. A lot of you guys probably don't even know about this page, but there's a community tab on YouTube. I put a poll on there just before the show, so it doesn't have a lot of votes yet. I'll check in with it again during the show. It says, uh, does YouTube deserve another Nassim? As you can see, we've only got 22 votes in right now, but with 82% of the vote, Yes has won, the other choice being no, and I am admitting I am gay by clicking this uh, with 18%. So if you'd like to go vote on that, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about that. I have a feeling I know what the answer is, but I could be wrong. You never know. Maybe a lot of you guys out there are gay. I don't know what your lifestyles are like, okay? And I really, I don't care. Um, yeah, it's in Guns and Ammo magazine. What's in Guns and Ammo magazine? Mark Zuckerberg has a matrix cable going into the back of his neck, feeding him all the information Facebook is gathering. He is using all that data to simulate human behavior. It's not working, Mark. <laughs> okay. It's a great theory there, Michael, but I don't think it's working for him if it's true. I thought he could just upload his mind into a new drone body if he gets suicided. You would think maybe it's not an escape tunnel. Maybe it is some sort of cabling that just automatically takes his data the second it detects the unit going down, and it sends him that way. Um, anyway, go on over to the community page, potawful.com slash face... No, sorry, not potawful.com. YouTube.com slash Facebook. Facebook. God damn, I'm retarded. YouTube.com slash potawful. And uh, the community tab there is where you can find that thing. Okay! She's a killer queen. All right, then let's go to the next killer queen bit here. Um, I don't think we ever went over this on the show. I might be wrong. Did we go over the dash cam, the haunting dash cam footage that was found later of Queen Nassim? You know, cops made contact with her the day before she committed her atrocity. <laughs> the atrocity being that she died, not about anything else. The day before, they caught her. And then they just let her go. They're like, okay, I guess she's just a crazy lady. And then she went off to go shoot people. Isn't that creepy? Watch this horrifying, terrible footage from Mountain View Police Department. The cop's approaching. So for the audio people, the cop is approaching her in her car. She's asleep in her car. It's the middle of the night. She's in like a Walmart parking lot or something like that. Go ahead. She's in a dress barn parking lot. She's going to get a dress from dress barn. A missing person is a missing adult at risk. Name of Nassim Adam. Ooh, uh, God, it's chilling just to hear him say her fucking name, man. At least her female, 55110, black over black, born in 79. Black over black. Uh, she usually lives with her grandmother. Last seen around noon on the 31st of March, has been her left in her Pontiac. Right, open up the door. Come on, let's see her. They talk to her. Ten, four. There is a female sleeping in the back seat of the vehicle right now. Hi, are you in a scene? There she is. Hey, so Ooh. you reported as missing. Yeah. <laughs> missing from <laughs> that yeah, that's the way to handle that. Hey, uh, you're reported as missing. Are you? Are you missing right now? I know I can see you, but you're reported as missing, is that true or San Diego? Yeah, I left my family. 
Okay. I don't, you don't live with them anymore? anymore. Okay. Can I can I just ask if you don't mind why you left? There's shining flashlights in her face. She just woke up. She has no idea what's going on. And think about this: her gun is in the car there. She's got. She's fucking loaded. She's strapped. I'm strapped. I'm rich. I'm nigger. I'm sick. We don't get along together. So we we okay. don't get along together. Do you have ID on you by chance? So did you just decide to move, or? So she's got all this garbage in her here. car. Everything's just filled up in there the way a woman keeps her car. Not because she's crazy. This is just how all women are. And so she's moving things around, trying to find her ID somewhere in the back seat. She's probably having to move that gun. I mean, look at... Look, this has to be a terrifying moment for her. She's probably like, oh, shit. I need to go kill everyone at YouTube, and now I'm getting stopped. Here we go. I'm not going to get to do it. Of course, she did get to do it, and she still failed. Here in Mountain View. I left home. This is eerie, says Nat Klo in the uh, Chaz room there. Yeah, I agree. This is one of the eeriest videos I've ever seen in my entire life. It's very spooky. I want you to imagine haunting music the entire time. Oh, I can't hear two days ago. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. I guess you've never done that before, huh? No. Okay, so your family was worried about you. Okay. <clears throat> I guess they called San Diego Police Department and reported you missing. Yeah, I didn't have okay. Oh, you didn't tell your parents or any or family or anything? Did you tell anybody where you went? Huh? Did you tell anybody where you went? No, not yet. Oh, okay. Have they tried calling you? No, I don't have a phone. Oh, you don't have a phone, or you didn't I, answer? I don't have any. But did they try calling you? My main phone that I used to, like, to call to them, I left it there. I didn't believe it. Okay. Okay. So they cannot contact her. They cannot contact her. So remember, she's running away from her family. Let's skip ahead to the end. Uh, you know, there's a lot of just back and forth in here, but I do want to see the part where they let her go, you know? She's a killer queen. All right, let's skip ahead here. And we check your wealth. Well, we have to tell them, we have to say... We have to tell them that we found you, right? Um, but, I mean, legally, we have to do that. We have to say, well, we found her. Um, she is fine. She left home because she doesn't want to be there anymore, and <clears throat> she doesn't want to be contacted. And that's all we tell them, okay? And then if you choose to contact your family, you can. But <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll take your name and the, and the car out of the system so who you will be reported missing anymore. Spooky okay. stuff. Is there anything you want us to tell your parents? Okay. Okay. Alrighty. <laughs> You're welcome. And that's it. She gets away scot free, man. Woo! It feels like whenever you see stuff like that, it feels like you were never meant to see it, you know? It feels like it got out illegally somehow. There's supposed to be laws in place that prevent you from being able to see the seams of reality. And that's one of those seams, those naseams of reality. Hit it, Tiny Naseem! Oh, well. I always try to grab her, but I never can. She's too fast for me. She jumps too high. Okay, so uh, let's check in with that poll. See if anybody voted in the meantime. Don't want to forget about that poll. We do have more votes, and still with 86% of the vote, it's yes, so nothing has really changed. Now, this is interesting. I found a woman recently. I found an Insta-thought, okay? This is one of these Instagram thoughts. I found her on a dating app. And I've actually talked to this woman, and I discovered the strangest thing. She looks like the model version of Queen Nassim. Like, if Queen Nassim was as hot as Queen Nassim was trying to be. Look, I'm not disparaging her, you know, uh, peace be upon her, blessed be thy name and everything. Of course, Queen Nassim. But let's be honest, I mean, I think a few of us had some questions about if she was born with a vagina or not when we first saw her. 
well, this is the clearly female version. Let's just put it that way of Queen Nassim. And I got to show you this profile because it, it, it really blew my mind. She goes by Echo Lalia, this woman. Again, just an Insta thought. That's all this is. Echo Lalia on Instagram. You might see these first couple pictures here and be like, eh, she just looks like some whore. But, I mean, she probably is. But look at this fucking video. Look at this. Are, are you telling me this isn't straight out of Nassimville? How is that not Queen Nassim? Am I crazy? Let me know in the chat room if I'm crazy. If, am I just being like, is my dick leading the way on this one? Or is this a hot version of Nassim Agdan? Even this picture kind of looks, there's a little bit of Queen Nassim-esque stuff going on here. Not every single one. And guys, feel free to just go check this one out on your own, on your own time. There's plenty of interesting videos on this one. It's a very interesting one. Not everything totally Nassim related on this one. But uh, feel free, you know, fellas, check that one out. Um, let's see what they're saying in the chat room. Yeah, she's fine. Uh, because LOL, ha ha ha, what the fuck? Breed that queen. Oh my God, marry her, Jesse. It's, it's a little bit uncanny, isn't it? I mean, that one video especially, and I had this idea. Let, tell me what you think. Again, I've talked to this woman very briefly, but I spoke to her. And what do you think of this idea? What if I hit her up and I try to get her to go along with me where I, I have her specifically dress up like Queen Nassim? Maybe that, maybe that camo leotard that Queen Nassim wore. Maybe get her a toy gun, have her do her hair and her makeup exactly like Queen Nassim, you know, but make it sexier. She's the model version, even sexier. Have her titties hanging out, all that kind of stuff strange similarities they're saying in the chat room yes and yes that shit looks like her it seems personality made up for her looks exactly hc frick i have of course i agree with that looks like a straight up fucking bitch says james well we'll see but what do you think of this idea i get her to dress up like nasim right and i film her trying to go into the youtube headquarters here in new york there's a youtube building in new york i don't know if you guys know that there's a google building a youtube building all here in New York City. There's a Twitter building, too. We could have her go to Twitter. And, you know, just have her try to get in, see how far we can get her in, saying, hello, I'm Nassim Agdam. Just film that. Do you think she would be willing? She's probably too hot to do that, right? That's probably too silly for this woman to do. Probably too much. That's a crazy-looking face, though. I don't know. I don't know what to think about that look on her face. Hang on a second. <laughs> I can't tell. This is the weird thing with Insta thoughts nowadays is like there's somewhere in this uncanny valley of being both hot and bizarre looking at the same time, but that's what Queen Nassim was. So that's part of why that's perfect, you know? Do you think, though, she'd be willing to do it? I mean, look at this. Hi. It's fucking perfect, man. Cosplay Nassim. Hi. She made this video. For the Hi. audio people out there, she's in front of this weird pink background. And there's like, uh, it's like vaporwave stuff. And it just keeps playing that audio over and over. And she's almost completely naked in front of it. But the hair, especially in this one, the hair looks like one of the wigs that Queen Nassim used to wear. So it's very odd. I don't know. That shit is edited as fuck. They're saying, yeah, of course it is. And every woman puts out edited photos of themselves only. There's no such thing as a non-edited photo of a woman nowadays. Because at the very least, you're all using filters. So yeah, I know that. This is just what we're used to now. We have to be used to it because women are so fucking... They're, bo they're somehow... Women have become completely f full of themselves and have zero confidence. It's like both happened to the same degree at the same time, and it's really bizarre, man. But anyway, that's Echo Lalia. E-C-C-O-L-A-L-I-A -L -L -I -A, if you want to check it out. It looks like an animatronic. Yeah, she does kind of look like she's meant to be inside a Disneyland ride. Like maybe she would hang out with Captain Jack Sparrow while he's out there doing a hard R. Raping. Raping the R. Pirates be raping and pillaging, but I just be raping. I'm Captain Jack. I've never seen those movies. She is like a Chuck E. Cheese robot that I would let give me a handy. Well, come on. You'd let her do more than a handy. Let's be honest. I know you got a wife, Patrick, but let's be honest man i mean come on that's true various dude anyway if you think that's a good idea i'll reach out to echo lalia and i'll say look 
Would you be, I, may, I might even be willing to put a little money behind this. She's probably a model or something, right? So she probably gets paid to do things like that. So I'll say, look, for a reasonable amount, we take you, dress you up like an actual terrorist, put her in the, because uh, Nassim wore one, a hijab, like one of those ninja hijabs when she did the shooting, put her in one of those, just cover up her face so it doesn't even matter that she looks like her. Have her go in there with an actual gun. Would you be willing to go into YouTube with a real gun and just start pointing it at people? <laughs> Probably not, though. Um, for not seeing the movies, you pretty much nailed it, says Jank about. <laughs> Is that how those movies go? <laughs> He's a racist rapist. I just assume, you know, what with Amber Heard and all that. Okay, so we do need to figure out who can take Queen Nassim's place, who can fill those incredibly big shoes. The job needs to get done. I don't think I'm strong enough to do it. Not while I'm still trying to produce the YouTube content. I don't think I've been wronged hard enough just yet, but I'm getting there. I'm certainly getting there. I also don't want to go to jail and I'm not going to kill myself at the end. You know, I think that's for suckers. I'm glad that the, like the New Zealand guy didn't kill himself. Why do they always kill themselves at the end? What are you doing that for? Stick around, man. I know it's going to suck. But you can kill yourself later. At least stick around long enough to say something publicly again. You know, when they want to get a quote from you, stick around long enough for the quote, then hang yourself with a bed sheet later on, okay? Or get somebody to stab you to death. That's fine. Could start a new Nassim YouTube page, claim to be the reincarnation. That's also a great idea. Maybe we should do that. So we got to get ready for that. Now, just in case... I end up needing to be the one who does the deed. I don't think I will have to be, but just in case, I figured I should get prepared, and so I thought I'd do that by playing a quick round of Pod Awful's very own video game, Zuck Hunt! You guys mind if I play a quick round of Zuck Hunt for you? This is Zuck Hunt. You can find this at uh, zuckhunt.fun. Um, that is the... That is the actual website for this, zuckhunt.fun. We, uh, Richard made this game, actually. I was going to say we, but I really had very... I, well, I guess I did some of the graphic stuff, but he did almost everything, including a lot of the graphic work. And uh, this is... Uh, it's exactly what you think it is. It's Duck Hunt, but instead of shooting ducks, you are shooting Mark Zuckerberg and, of course, uh, the T-shirt, guys. Zuck Hunt, the T-shirt, as you can almost see here at the bottom. It says Nassim Do. You play this game on Nassim Do instead of Nintendo. The t-shirt's still available. The old logo for the show, the only place that's still available. Get it. Potawful.shop. Okay? Potawful.shop if you don't have this shirt yet. And this is a fucking great shirt. This actually is probably one of my favorites of the uh, shirts that we sell. I love this design. It's so funny. It's so funny to wear this shirt walking down the street. Because everybody recognizes Mark Zuckerberg nowadays. Everybody knows what he looks like. And so you're wearing a shirt that clearly is saying, kill him. <laughs> and you're just wearing that down the street. People look at you like you're fucking psycho, man. And it's, it's a great shirt to wear out. You know, I think I wore this when we did the 9-11 um, the video where Ryan and I went to 9-11 and visited the 9-11 building. And I, right, I think I was wearing this in that one. I remember the people looking at me like, uh, should he be in here? Is everybody cool with him being here? Is that fine? He looks like he's going to kill people. It's a great shirt. Potawful.shop. Let's play some Zuck Hunt and get my aim good. There you go. It's me as the dog. I haven't played this in a while. I might not be any good. Oh, oh there's a flying Zuck. Bam. Got him. Fucking first hit. Bang on. Nailed it. All right. Let's get this one. Ah, shit. I missed. No! There we go. Got him. Got him. Fucking got him. All right. And... No! Shit, man. I'm doing about Nassim levels of damage here. This I'm not really doing much better than Nassim. All right, there we go. Headshot. Fucking 360 no-scope that one. Guys, I'm playing Fortnite now. I'm on Fortnite. You can play with me on Fortnite now. <laughs> I just downloaded Fortnite, so I'm getting good with my aim. All right. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, three more. I'm fucking killing them now. Three more. Here we go. One. Boom. 
By the way, sometimes you kill the Twitter bird. Sometimes it's the Twitter bird. It's random. Those come in sometimes. Boom, got him. Headshot. All right, one more. Come on, Zucky. Here we go. Boom, fucking nailed it. Damn, son. That was a pretty good score. 2,000 score. That's not bad. This is round two. I just want to see if it'll give a Twitter bird. Can we... Wow, I didn't even get close to shooting him correctly and it still killed him. I just want to see a Twitter bird. Can we do it till I get a Twitter bird? That was my idea to put Twitter birds in here. Really? No Twitter bird. I usually... Oh, there's one! Look at that! The animated Twitter bird. When you shoot it, it becomes the logo. All right, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. There you go. That's Zuck Hunt, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed that one. Um, but as you can see, <laughs> headshot. Everybody uses aimbot. Yeah, uh, he can't on Mac unless he partitions his hard drive. I can't what? Um, oh, Apex Legends. Yeah, everybody plays Apex Legends now. Yeah, I can't do it on Mac unless I use Parallels or Boot Camp or something like that. I've gotten compliments for the Zuck Hunt shirt, says Elizabeth. Wow, you got compliments. I only get stares, horrified stares. So that's another selling point for the Zuck Hunt shirt is you can get compliments or horrifying stares. Drop shot that mofo. Hell yeah, brother. Um, I've been wanting to play that, says Lord. Oh, uh, Apex Legends. I thought she meant Zuck Hunt. <laughs> well, you can play it. Zuckhunt.fun if you do want to play it. Zuck Hunt is tons of fun. It really is. It really is tons of fun. But as you see there, I did okay. 2,000. That's an okay score for the first round. But obviously, I had a lot of misses, especially on those first few. And I think that's where Queen Nassim went uh, wrong. She panicked. She missed those first few. She got a couple clips in there. Those people didn't die. And then she went, ah, fuck it, I'm running out of bullets. Bang, shot herself in the head, and now she's gone forever. So I need a fucking ringer. I need a ringer who can bring this one in. Boom, no photo finishes, nothing. Get the job done right there on the spot. Susan Wojcicki. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, hang on. I just realized I'm being too... I'm sounding too serious about this, but it would be nice if all those people died, so whatever. Um, I need somebody who can really fucking bang on. Cap, 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 cap. So what I've decided to do is I thought about it, and I realized multiple, if Nassim, a goon of ours, a posthumous goon of ours, came that close to doing it, surely a still alive goon of ours could do it. And I started racking my brain, who would the best candidates be? So I've actually come up with some stats, you know, some player stats here on a couple of the goons that I think might be good candidates for this. So let's check out my stats on the goons to see who might be able to fill Queen Nasheem, Nasheem, Queen Nasim's shoes. Let's go to our first one. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Wright, the Australian badass. Here he is pointing a gun at me for some reason. He's very mad, pointing a gun at me. Now, I've got the stats on screen. The stats are, uh, the first one here, intelligence. And as you can see, it's a score out of five stars. I gave him a one star on intelligence. Obviously, he's autistic. He's certainly not a bright guy. We fooled him multiple times. Very easy to make mad. He believes in many nonsensical things. Now, you might think intelligence, you want that to be a five. No, 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 no. You want the intelligence to be as low as possible. The, s <laughs> the less intelligence the more likely it is you are to get the job done. That's part of why I can't be the one to do it, okay? I'm a three. <laughs> I could have said five, but I'm... Look, if I'm honest, Joe, I'm kind of retarded. So I'm a three. I'm too smart to do it. So in the less intelligence, the better. So one star, pretty good. Pretty good. Now his aim, his aim, I gave him a three. Now here's why. Number one, he's aiming that gun almost exactly at the camera here. It would certainly wing me. So I feel like I would probably die from that. You know, it looks like he's aiming for my heart in this picture. So I think that'd be pretty good. He also does play video games. That's something you need to remember about Michael Wright is we've seen him playing video games on his YouTube channel. So I'm pretty sure he's got some aim in him. I gave him three stars. I think he could do it. He's into the military. We know he could probably get his aim good. He probably practices once in a while. Now, charisma, <laughs> of course, charisma, always an important talking point when it comes to stats. I gave him a two. You might think that's pretty high for Michael Wright. You might disagree with that charisma, but let's be honest. 
he got on TV with his charisma. He was on Tosh.0. Oh. He is a local legend in his town. Everybody knows who he is. That's charisma points right there. So I gave him two for that. Now, Tactical, that's where he goes off the charts, all the way. Five stars, Tactical. <laughs> Nobody owns more tactical gear than Michael Wright. He's basically an actual member of the army at this point. If, uh, if they allotted any stolen Valor people into the army, if they said, you know what, you've been stealing Valor for long enough, you're in, they do it with him because he's already got all the gear and the army is poor. So he would almost certainly win there. And then Revenge, the final and probably, probably the most important stat on the list. His Revenge factor is only at a two. Now, what I mean by Revenge is, remember, Nassim did her crimes because she was getting back at YouTube. So we have to take a look at this and go, do these goons have anything against YouTube? I think the answer here with Michael is yes to a degree. He has had to go back and make a new YouTube channel completely. All of his old videos are gone. Now, is it entirely the fault of YouTube? Not really. It's actually more our fault. We bullied him by saying he was stolen Valor so much that he deleted his entire YouTube channel. But I feel like he would blame YouTube for not doing something about us. So I gave him a two on the revenge scale. And as you can see, that's pretty good. Not the greatest stats, but not bad. Let's take a look at uh, one of Michael Wright's videos here, if I can fucking do that, if it will let me do that. Let's take a look. It won't let me go over there. There, It's very odd. Uh, let's take a look at Michael Wright's video here. See what he's made of. Here he is making siren noises while riding a bike and wearing his tactical gear. <laughs> Okay, I think you get the point there. So, you know, pretty good candidate, I think. Let me know in the chat what you think. Do you think Michael could do it with those stats? I don't know. But that's Michael Wright. Now, I would say he also has an advantage in speed and agility. Although he's a big guy, he has a bicycle. And that puts him above a lot of the other goons. So that's Michael Wright for you. Now, let's check out another goon stat here is Wild Man Chris. Now, let's check out the stats when it comes to Wild Man Chris. As you can see, let's show it like that. As you can see, the intelligence out of five, we've got zero, a perfect score. A, an absolute perfect score for our needs when it comes to intelligence. Wild Man Chris, probably the stupidest of the goons by far, I would say. Knocks it out of the park when it comes to intelligence. His aim, though, is only a one. Now, here you see him pointing the gun at his own head while he flicks us off. That was the number one issue with Queen Nassim. She shot herself and basically nobody else. She was the only person who died. That, coupled with the fact that he has the shortest arms in existence, really goes to show you that I don't think it's going to work out when it comes to wild man Chris getting any shots in. He'll probably wing a few people. It would probably be uh, Nassim part do um, in that, you know, a few people might get hit by accident. But who knows? Who knows? Let's go to the next stat here. His charisma. Now, that's a three. I would say his charisma is a three. You know, he's a pretty popular guy on the internet. He's got a lot of fans. got a lot of You Now fans. He's a rapper. He, they want him on Dr. Phil. He just doesn't believe it anymore. But now they actually want him on one of those daytime talk shows, Dr. Phil or Dr. Oz or something called about him. They just called me about him. So he could be on TV with this. Um, a lot of charisma. Everybody in town knows him for sure. So I gave him three charisma. Obviously, a lot is taken away for his sour attitude. Tactical, though, he only gets a one. As far as Tactical goes, only gets a one. I only gave him the one because he's got the fake gun. We know it's a fake gun, Chris. Stop pretending it's real. Pointing it at your head does nothing. So at least you could fake out an idiot with that gun, I suppose. But as far as we know, he has no other tactical gear. But Revenge. Now that's where Chris comes in. Okay, Chris is a bit... He's not just wild man, Chris. He's wild 
card, Chris, okay? Because Chris, this guy, it's a four revenge. This guy has had to take down multiple YouTube channels. YouTube is the one taking him down. He's having to hide content, take down videos all the time. He gets zucked on YouTube more often than we do. So he hates YouTube, and he hates any platform that doesn't give him fame. So we could even turn him loose on other things. You, Not just YouTube, you now, which I don't think is that big a player, but we could probably get him looking at Facebook and Twitter, you know? I feel like he'd be willing to take a look at least in that direction. Let's take a look at the direction of Chris himself when it comes to one of his uh, videos. Here's how Chris lost his front tooth. This one's called Strong Busty Girl Punches Man Knocks His Tooth Out. I don't know if you guys noticed, but in the videos we've been playing in the Friday Night Hangout explosions of Chris, he's now missing a front tooth. I don't know if that was ever properly explained in Friday Night Hangout Explosion, but this is exactly how it happened. Watch it happen on camera. <laughs> so he's just screaming at a gaggle of black girls. There's, uh, what do you call it? A murder of black girls <laughs> hanging outside a school or something. He just wanders up to them, starts recording, and screams at them. See this shit? You see this shit? Fuck you. You see this shit? No, no, you won't. No, you won't do shit. Oh, you won't do shit. You won't do shit. I said you won't do shit. On what I won't do shit. I'm right here. On where I won't do shit. You won't do shit. I won't do shit. Where? Where? Cause up, say that shit again. That shit again. Ha! <laughs> Got him. So who is the real retard? I know we gave Chris a zero on the intelligence score, but who's the real retard? The retard who comes up and just starts screaming at people for no reason? Or the woman who wants to fight a retard for screaming? I mean, that, that's pretty fucking low, man. I know we make fun of Chris all the time, but I'd never hit the guy. His arms are too small. Better go your ass on now. I'll go when I'm ready. Where? Where? <laughs> Where? The cops? Call 12. I don't give a fuck. Stay to the nah, get the fuck off me, bro. Nah, man, you coming up here with that, that stupid ass shit, I'll beat the fuck out of you. Shit. Shit. And look at that. You see, now you guys might not know black people well enough, but what just happened there, he goes, shit. And that, it means something, okay? In the black neighborhoods, in the n communities, that means something. And the way this girl just turned around, she's not the one who's yelling at him. This is just a friend trying to back off the other one from hitting a retard. But she hears shit, and she goes, mm, and she gets out of there. And the reason she does that is because shit means, oh, it's on now. All right, so the girl says, I won't do nothing. And he goes, shit. And she's like, okay, all right, she's about to hit him. She knows she's about to hit him because he said shit. Now watch this. What's it? Come on. Come on. Uh. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you, but I'm like, oh, bam, hit him. <laughs> hit him right in the fucking head. Let's watch that one more time. Let's get that shit in there again. You ain't coming up here with that, that stupid ass shit. I'll beat the fuck Yeah, it means fuck you will. Uh, says in spades in the chat room. That's exactly right. It means fuck you will. Shit. Shit. Boom. You see that look on her face? Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh. She has to get out of there. But then she has a second thoughts. The friend we're talking about here. The friend goes, Ooh. And then has second thoughts, so she gets a couple paces away. She goes, all right, I can't let my friend beat the fuck out of a retard. And she, so she turns back around. She's like, come on, girl. What's it? Come on. Come on. Uh. I'm going to beat the fuck out of you, but I'm like, oh, fuck shit. You, that, that was a different kind of shit. That was a, uh, oh, damn, she did it. Shit. See, shit has many meanings. Shit has many meanings depending on the way you emphasize it. It's a lot like Chinese. Shit. That's the best you can do? I'm gonna call my daddy. He made... <laughs> that the best you can do, he says. He just spit out his tooth. Did you hear that? He's spitting out blood in his tooth. No. 
There you go. That's it. Ah! That's. I mean, can you believe that's how a video starts? Ah! <laughs> he just starts screaming at strangers. All right. So there you go. That's Wild Man Chris. He's crazy enough to do it. That's what's important here. He's crazy enough to do it. So Wild Man Chris, some pretty good stats on the old could he fill the shoes meter here. Let's go to our next goon. I don't know if you guys saw this one coming or not, but ladies and gentlemen, it is Rufio Fionix. Now, let's take a look at Rufio's stats. His intelligence is a two. Now look, he's smarter than Michael Wright, obviously. <laughs> like, I mean, Rufio is autistic, and he's stupid, but he's not that stupid. He's pretty stupid. Two is still pretty stupid, so please don't be mad at me for giving him a two, but I couldn't give him the same level as Michael Wright. But here's where we get into some trouble. Obviously, Rufio, also a gamer, so you'd think he would be at least as high as Michael Wright when it comes to aim, but his aim is a one because he uses aim, aim assist. assist. We know that for a fact. He likes to claim that everybody does it. You have to do it. And console gaming is better than PC gaming because of it. In reality, we know it's because he can't aim. And usually when he's playing a game, he's playing against children who don't know how to play so that he seems better than them, right? Now let's go to Charisma. Charisma is a zero out of five. <laughs> And we know that for a fact because Rufio has no fans without Pod Awful. We're the reason he had anybody to begin with. He couldn't keep us liking him. He couldn't keep it going with us. He really turned it all around. He couldn't even keep his girlfriend, Diana Steinfeld, alive. So he has zero charisma. But here's where he gets good. GG, get good. Tactical is a fucking stellar five out of five. Nobody is more tactical than Rufio. Oh, wait, I just said Michael Wright is that tactical, didn't I? Oh, well, <laughs> they're both very tactical guys. <laughs> okay, yeah, Michael Wright is probably more tactical. Maybe I should have given him a four. Rufio might have deserved a four, but Ruf here's the difference between Michael Wright and Rufio. Michael Wright, skilled with, uh, you know, all the tactical gear, but doesn't own any swords. And not only is... Rufio familiar with the way of the blade, he can also use a lightsaber. We've seen his lightsaber skills. So the second they invent a real lightsaber, Rufio is going to be the most dangerous man on the planet. He's the only person ready for that to already exist. I mean, this is a picture, a drawing of him that Patrick did from an episode called How to Be Tactical. So obviously, he's hugely tactical. I will amend this and say, Michael Wright, probably. I'd give Michael Wright a five and a half over Rufio's five, though, just because Michael Wright's got all the gear, but Rufio's got some important gear. He knows guns. We know he stole a gun. Remember that? Rufio stole a gun and went to jail over it. He's got guns. He's got swords. So he's got the weaponry, okay? We know he's ready to go. He's probably got 15 kinds of pocket knife. Um, am I thinking of the right person? Well, who are you thinking of, Jink? Uh, are you going to use that flaccid penis video for the highlight reel? <laughs> that you are thinking of the right person. Rufio Fionix is the twirly vid. But no, I'm not going to show a man's penis on this broadcast. Um, now, here's where it really gets good, though. Revenge is also a five out of five. Because not only... Not only was he getting nowhere just thanks to YouTube alone, not only was he fighting the algorithm, algorithm on YouTube, but he was also fighting us. So it's worse than what Michael Wright had. Um, it, was, it was us leading him to go to new channels. He's, how, many, how many times can a guy rename his channel to these all, all these different stupid things? He gets his ch channel trailer wrong. He uploads a video of himself fucking up on there. You know he hates YouTube. You know he hates these platforms. He probably hates Twitch. He hates them for not defending him from the bullies. And we, of course, are the bullies. So he's going to have it out for these guys for sure. He would like to exact his revenge. I'm positive. Let's take a look at Rufio's skills from his most recent video. 
This just came out yesterday or last night, actually. Um, it's called I Was Asked to Carry a Team Against a Lag Switch User. I don't know what any of that means. Let's take a look. I sense darkness approaching. And again, let me know in the chat room who you think is right so far for the job. Who can fill Nassim's shoes? I know it's an impossible task, but someone has to be able to do it. Okay? We got to pick somebody. All right, here he is playing Halo. All right, hey guys. So I know that not many of you are going to really understand what uh, what's going on here. It's not that uh, that we got the win. That's not what was actually surprising when, uh, you know, in this video. No, uh, rather on Halo Master Chief Collection on Xbox One, um, about I think like four of the people like you know messaged me can you know consistently saying, hey, dude, this guy is lag switching hard. Can you like come in and like mess him up? Because like you'll you'll be able to see this throughout the entire <laughs> video, like the game looks like its frames are all kinds of messed up. Now here's here's the only thing I can kind of break. Okay, so here's what I can gather from this. So Rufio is essentially saying he had like four guys come to him and go, Rufio, man, you're the best at Halo. Nobody is as hard a fucking gamer as you. You know, the five year olds he plays with, they come to him and say, Nobody fucking kicks ass like Rufio. We got this guy. He's glitching out the game on us. We can't take him down. We need to call you in as backup and take this guy out for us. Meanwhile, he's showing the footage from the game, and he's just dying over and over and over, and that's where the aim statistic came in. This down to is I've sat here and, and you know, I've watched this frame by frame multiple times. Now... <clears throat> With a lag switch, usually a lag switch a lag switch user will try to target somebody else. No, this guy was targeting himself so as to feed himself with an advantage with being a little bit below what everybody else was. That way everybody else would get a little bit of frame drop. Internet connection. Oh, he did just get a triple kill. You know, he just got a triple kill. Maybe I should up his aim stat a little bit there. He just got a triple kill. Let's see if he survives it. Distortion as well as ping rate problems so essentially he's getting a, a, a you know i guess a disadvantage while giving everybody else a massive <laughs> okay so immediately after getting a triple kill a guy just sneaks up behind him shoots him in the head and his way of trying to defend himself he just threw out a melee elbow <laughs> he didn't shoot back the guy was like 20 feet away he just throws out a melee to try to kill him so okay maybe rufio not the right guy for the job and by the way obviously still very boring so i think we have the uh i think we what was the, what's the fucking other uh thing i don't know anyway hey guys i'm ruby rocks and just really quickly charisma like, that was what i was looking for i think we've got the charisma thing uh correct in this video i want to say a few words look <laughs> don't tamper with a video game because you might end up on the blacklist i don't know if he's off of this or if he got you know, appealed away from it or something. I don't know. But I, I do know this much. This guy was making the game really bugged. Like, it was really, it was a big problem for everyone in the lobby. Massive frame drops. The recording looked poop because of him. Look at this now, beautiful top, background he's got going on. He must be redoing his studio, too. Look at all that trash, just garbage on his desk back there, just on camera. You could have clipped that. You didn't have to show it, but there top it is. Of that, um, I just want to say this much. As I said before in the little like text, I will not be showing who he is, what his gamer tag is. I will not. You did. It's all over the video. It's uh, All right, Rufio, you're an idiot. I don't think you're the man for the job. You're not the man for any job, as a matter of fact. Uh, let me know in the chat room who you think is the man for the job. Is it Michael Wright? Is it Rufio Fionix? Is it Wild Man Chris? We need someone to fill those shoes. Someone has to be strong enough. I saw somebody in the chat said they think Jock Jam Jesus could do it. I don't want Jock Jam. I think you're right. I don't want him doing it, though, because he would kill himself at the end. We don't want that. We know Jock Jam Jesus is suicidal. There's no reason to give him a reason to do it. Okay? Uh, by the way, checking in with that YouTube poll. Uh, now with 37 votes, 89% of the people say, yes, YouTube does deserve another Nassim. So I think we're on the right track here. An all-goon suicide squad. Now that's an interesting idea.
That's a variant. Maybe we get them all to go in there. Maybe hit multiple targets at once. That would be a great idea. Send in Wildman Chris and Rufio as a team. Wildman Chris says K Lord. Um, okay, well, maybe Chris uh not will sorry. I don't know what that means. Uh Wildman Chris is the only one with enough charisma. That's true. He does have them. Wait a second. No, that's not true. There is somebody else with more charisma. There's somebody, there's somebody more cunning than all of these characters. I mean, yeah, I love you know, Michael Wright as much as the next guy, but he's he's too smart, honestly. No, he's not too smart. He's uh but he's got I don't know. He's definitely got the tactical. He doesn't have the charisma. He doesn't have the revenge in him. Then we've got Wildman Chris. He's definitely not tactical enough. His aim is going to be shit. Then we've got Rufio Fionix. He has no charisma. His aim is shit. I mean, there is one guy, though, I can think of. It kind of makes up for a lot of these things. Ladies and gentlemen, Jareth Timothy Taylor! Now let's go over the man's stats. You know him, you love him. He's a legend and a hero, and he's my best friend. Jareth Timothy Taylor, his intelligence, a 5 out of 5. His aim, a 5 out of 5. His charisma, a 5 out of 5. His tactical, a 5 out of 5. The only issue is it's a 0 on the revenge. He has no reason to want to do it. We'd have to convince him otherwise. Now, for those who might not know Jareth Timothy Taylor, he's a legend and a hero. Everybody in Kelowna, where he lives, knows him, or where he's from, knows him. Everybody in Victoria knows him. And everybody in Sierra Leone, Africa, knows him because he shot up an army base there and killed every single person inside single-handedly. That's how we know he could do it. He's got the skills. As a matter of fact, a year ago on the show, we talked to Jareth Timothy Taylor, and I tried to get some info from him about how you might go about doing this. I just didn't ask, I didn't pull the trigger, so to speak, on asking him if he'd be willing to do the job. Again, he's at a zero on the revenge, but everything else is perfect. He's one of the smartest guys I know. He's got the best aim, most charisma, most tactical. I mean, the man puts his own stats out there on his Facebook page. There's only one man for the job, and it's absolutely Jareth Timothy Taylor. Let me put in his phone number here. Let me just type this in, if you don't mind, and we'll see if we can get him on the line. Now, I didn't have this set up ahead of time, so I don't know if he's willing to take this call. I'll be calling him from a random phone number, too, so he might not pick up. But let's see if we can get Jareth on this. If we don't get him tonight, we'll just keep asking. We'll keep asking on future episodes because we need somebody who's careful and who can do this. Oh, by the way, this is a, a photoshopped image. Uh, Jared Timothy Taylor does not take loads to the face. Let's call Jared Timothy Taylor. He's Rambo, they say in the chat. That's right. Maybe Wyatt Privilege can antagonize him enough. Maybe. Serge Leclerc might be able to do it. We put the right robot brain inside Jared's head. Get that bitch Lizzie says he can't be Nassim, though. Fuck Lizzie. Fuck that bitch, Lizzie. Oh, please leave a message after the tone. Ah, shit. Hey, Jareth, this is Jesse from Pot Awful, best friend, man. Uh, been a long time since we talked. I sent you a message on Facebook. I don't know if you saw it, but I'm on the show live right now, and I was hoping we could talk about something. Um, you know, just wanted to catch up with you, see what's going on, and plant some memories and stuff like that into your head and... Uh, you know, just see if you've been having a good time and uh, how you feel about YouTube. Should it keep existing or not? Um, firecracker, Firecracker, Alpha Bravo, Charlie. Uh, you can give me a call back anytime, brother. Thanks, man. You're a legend and a hero. I love you. All right. Hung up on him. Now I'm going to give that a second. We might call him back in another second here. See if we can't get him. He might screen the call. You know, there's no way for him to call me back on this phone number I've got set up right now. So he doesn't have the right phone number to call me back. In fact, I might have just called from Mike Allen's phone number or something. But uh, we'll try him again in a second to see what happens. And if you were confused by that message, I'm hoping maybe he's like some sort of Manchurian candidate and one of those words might wake him up and just start programming him to do what he's meant to do. I don't know if they ever implanted that robot brain in him or not. If you don't know what we're talking about when it comes to Jareth Timothy Taylor, go check out a Jareth Timothy Taylor episode. 
you're going to like the way you feel afterwards, okay? You're, if you're not into Jareth Timothy Taylor talk, you will be once you watch these episodes. This is one of the greatest guys, one of the greatest goons, and a beautiful best friend of the show. <laughs> Giannator says, I have just added these guys' stats to their wiki pages. I can send you these photos uh, or these uh, images here, Giannator, if you want to put them on there too. Might be a great idea, actually. I love that. Guys, have you checked out the wiki for the Pod Awful show? Uh, it's at wiki.bigbrainniggas.com. We will one day port that over to the Pod Awful domain, but I haven't figured out how to do it yet. But uh, wiki.bigbrainniggas.com, please contribute and uh, help us keep our wiki going. You do have to sign up for an account now. We had some asshole go in and try to delete all the pages as if that can't just be undone. Have you never... Have you never been to a wiki before? Do you not know that you can just hit undo on all that shit? I mean, it's annoying, but it's, it's easily done, right? Uh, so now you have to sign up. It sucks, but sign up, help contribute to the wiki. These stats, this is a, that's a great idea. I didn't even think of that. It's a great idea, putting the stats on their pages. Maybe we should come up with stats for all the goons, just in general. I don't know if it's always these stats. I'm not sure aim makes sense for all of the goons or tactical, but it certainly makes sense in this case. Uh, I'm going to have to check out the Jareth episode after this. Nat Klo, you really should check it. There's a couple Jareth Timothy Taylor episodes. See if you can find like the oldest one. Check that one out first. It's going to give you all the info. Okay, just search the Pot Awful uh, video page on YouTube. Should I think it's a free one. I'm pretty sure the Jareth Timothy Taylor episode is a free one. So you should be able to easily search for it there. Lee of K's Good Cooking. You think Lee would be able to do something like this? You think he would be capable? I mean, I know he's a psychopath. I just don't think he would be capable. Just put the DNS records to the wiki.podawful.pizza. Yeah, I got to get Richard to do that or something. I want to make a card game with all the goons. That's what I, I was going for, that sort of thing here. Um, I, actually, what I was originally going for with the stats is, do you remember on the back of Transformers packages? They had stats at the bottom. It's like completely meaningless to the toys, but they always put stats at the bottom. Megatron, he's got a, a, a 15 intelligence and his power is uh, 10, and, you know, whatever. But Optimus Prime, his courage is 20, <laughs> whatever it might be. Uh, that's what I was going for with this. That was where the idea came from. All right, let's try Jareth one more time because we do need to make something happen. I mean, on this, the beautiful day of Queen Nassim, say your prayers, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so let's call Jareth one more time here. How about this beautiful art by Patrick of me protecting Queen Nassim inside my fortress? Inside the new studio fortress? All right, we're not going to bother him too much. Let's call one more time, see if he answers. Maybe this phone number isn't his anymore. Might have to update our contacts list. I'm very tactical in this image. I've got a gun, a sword, pouches knee pads, gauntlets. All right, looks like we're not going to get Jareth on the phone. I thought he was free on Wednesdays. I think his, uh, it didn't even go to voicemail that time. He must not trust the call. I don't know what's going on there. That was strange. Very strange. Um, you know, we'll check in with Jareth another time. I'm pretty sure he and I are still great friends, so I don't know why you wouldn't take the call. Looks like we're not going to figure out who could fill those shoes, but really, could anybody ever actually fill the shoes of Queen Nassim? I don't think so. Guys, when you go to bed tonight, say a prayer to dear God for our blessed Lord and Savior, Queen Nassim Agdam. Well, that does it for this episode of Pod Awful. Thank you, Pizza Fund, for making all of this possible. Couldn't do it without you. This is a Pizza Fund-only episode. If you want to see the full episode and all of the crazy shenanigans that happen in it, go to podawful.pizza, sign up for the $12 version, get immediate access to the entire archive of past episodes. As far as the premium episodes go, Friday Night Hangout Explosion, Pod Offer Shows, Craigslist Roulette, tons of content from years and years and years, more content than you'll ever get through in your entire life podawful.pizza support the show and until next time have an awful day Steven Crowder Ooh.
Head over to potawful.com slash iTunes and subscribe to us on iTunes. We're live every Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern at potawful.tv. Love the show? Keep it going by donating to the Pizza Fund. potawful.com slash support. And anything else you need is at potawful.com. Nigga, this content right here is pizza fun only. Hot awful dot pizza. This shit is beef. Hot awful dot pizza. We got shooters in these streets.